Welcome back to Friar Talk. Today, we are going to be talking about the Larry Rothschild firing. I'm sorry we didn't post a video yesterday. We're going to have a live stream and then like a quick thing on Ben Fritz tomorrow morning. Um, and then we're going to do our normal live stream before the uh, Dodgers series. And then on Wednesday, you guys asked about having a Doug Eddings uh, segment. So we're going to do that on Wednesday. But for today, we're going to talk about the big news. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to you know talk about it right as it happened. We were all busy. But Big news today, Larry Rothschild is fired. Um, this I don't think this is surprising when you consider like how the year has been. I think the surprising part is the timing of when they fire him. Firing him on, what is it, August 23rd today? That is a very weird time to, to fire your pitching coach. You know, a month is left in the season. And I'm going to say right now, I, I think the biggest reason for why they, they fire him now and don't wait till the end of the year is because of, all, like the accumulation of, of injury after injury in this pitching staff. Um, and I think that was kind of like the end of it. Like, all right, like what, what's, you know, what are we gaining by keeping him on if we're just going to fire him? And that's already been decided. Like this has been such a catastrophe in the pitching department. So I think that was just kind of the reasoning behind it. Um, and I've talked about in the past, I don't love firing coaches in the middle of the year. I think it's in a way kind of waving the white flag in, in some cases, but I don't have an issue with this just because of the situation, because of how many guys have been hurt. And now potentially they have Chris Paddock and you Darvish about to come back. Don't want to see those guys go on the aisle again, especially when that's been the case is Larry Rothschild all to blame for the injuries and the struggles. No. And we're going to get into that today, but I'll start with you, Chase. What was just your, you know, your overall thoughts on, on the Padres firing Larry Rothschild today? Uh, I believe my exact words were F. Yeah. I'm glad he's gone. I wasn't the biggest fan of Rothschild in the first place. You know, no one can ever really replace Darren Balsley. What he did with all the no-name pitchers that came to our bullpen and made them all-star closers. You know, Brad Hand was a waiver wire pickup. Kirby Yates was really struggling with the Yankees under Rothschild, ironically. Came to San Diego, and Darren Balsley made him to who he was today. You know, we've had, it's just been proven multiple times that he's been able to do this, and when he was gone, you really saw the impact in that Larry Rothschild couldn't step up and take over his place. And instead, we've had guys underperforming and more often injured than when there were pitchers under Darren Balsley's regime. So, and I think that could also be a testament to how much the new guy, Ben Fritz, his knowledge on pitching, uh, Tingler were saying that, you know, he really understands it. He's helped with, uh, the medicals on and off the team. He's helped guys rehab and everything. He's worked in every level. So maybe that's just a testament to that guy. But yeah, the, the main problem I had with Larry Rothschild is one, the injuries. And two, when did he ever go out and really talk to a pitcher in the middle of a game? Every time there was a time called, it was either Caratini or Nola and Manny Machado and maybe a couple of the other infielders going up to the mound and talking to the pitcher. While Larry Rothschild's just standing there in the dugout just looking at him watching his pitcher get absolutely rocked he didn't go up there and say anything say hey you need to make this adjustment he just stood there most of the time and then even in the off games it didn't look like they were really working on something in the bullpen because the pitchers that continue to struggle have been struggling heavily for a reason and no adjustments have been made so i think it's a fair firing and yeah happy to see him gone it was going to happen either way uh I think that's that goes without saying. Um, so obviously, there's a lot of Padre fans, including myself, that are uh, happy that it's done. Um, this is a move, obviously, for this year and and next year, whatever the following. Um, there's been a lot of injuries under him right now. Darvish was lower back, so that's uh, you know maybe you don't include that. Paddock was, or I think quad or groin, one of the two. Oblique. Oblique. There we go. And uh, so I don't, I don't blame that on him either. But the Nelson Lamet had ace, ace caliber stuff. He goes down. Mike Clevenger goes down. Not even, not even a couple of weeks after, like maybe four, five weeks after joining us. Um, Baez, Castillo, I, I can name. There's a whole rotation of guys that went down with arm injuries. A whole rotation and a bullpen. Both. And let me tell you, it's a pretty damn good rotation in bullpen. It would definitely be a top 15 in this league. Um, but obviously happy it's gone. Now, would I blame all the, you know, all of the Padres' recent struggles on him? No. Um, 
it's it's tough to you know a lot of injuries a lot of guys that are underperforming you know at the plate or on the mound just in general a lot of underperforming guys uh manny you know i hate to point it out because i love the guy but ever since the all-star break or no the trade deadline he has like a 196 batting average needs to be a lot better than that especially because he's one of the rocks of this team jake has been on fire fernando just came back recently but you know all these guys need to start stepping up Ever since we swept the Dodgers in San Diego last time, 23 and 26. That is awful. The Brewers, 34 and 16. Dodgers, 34 and 17. Giants, 32 and 26. We're the, not, we're, we're the sixth worst team in that span. And that's because our, our pitchers are going out there and throwing and having a five ERA since July 1st. And that is awful. And that's mainly the reason you can you can attest to, you know, Larry Rothschild being gone because wherever he's went. Been a crapshoot. Sonny Gray hated him. Lance Lynn hated him. A lot of guys haven't haven't liked him. Blake Snell doesn't even say. I, I've seen things where Blake Snell hasn't even said a word to that guy in, in warmups in bullpens. Doesn't even say a word. And you know the state of this team right now is very concerning. They asked Mark Melanson what you know what his opinion is on the bullpen right now. How they're gonna how they're gonna try and help him out. And Mark Melanson seemed pretty frustrated. In his own words, he said, "I've got a lot to say, but I'm not gonna say it." And when you say you're not going to say it, it normally it means something wrong. And maybe that's the whole vibe throughout the whole clubhouse right now. And that's not the kind of clubhouse you want. That's not the clubhouse mentality you want. And I, I truly I am starting to think that not acquiring a starting pitcher at the deadline is what's ravaging this team right now. And I know the prices were high, but the price of losing is a lot higher, especially considering, you know, the clubhouse gets dysfunctional. The fans start getting hopeless. The fans start not attending your games. And that's the whole point of building your team is that you want you want your fans to show up so you can get revenue. Like, and we'll show up, but you got to win. And, uh, you know, hopefully this is a move towards that. We were talking about it before, and Isaac, you were saying that you think that a lot of the reason why they go and they they fire him now is because that's basically – and I don't, I don't think that the fans' opinions on this are necessarily, like, making it – like, making the decisions. I, I don't think that's the case at all. But when fans stop showing up and fans are very clearly frustrated, that there wasn't a starting pitcher added. And I, and I would say this too, like, cause you brought up, you know, that's a big reason for why this team is struggling. I think I agree to an extent, but I also say like, what's the reason for us to believe that that guy would have came over here, been healthy or would have keep kept playing the way he was because so far under Larry Rothschild, the only guy that I can say like legitimately with like a large enough sample size has looked way better is Joe Musgrove. No one else has necessarily improved. Now we did see the Nelson Lament improve right in that first 60 game season with him. And then he goes down with what, like four to elbow injuries in a row since then. Um, you could say that Mark Melanson has had a little bit of resurgence. I, I don't think that's necessarily to do with Larry Rothschild. I mean, We've seen his expected ERAs like above four, and, and he's done well. Like I'm not going to try to discredit his year because he's had a really good year when you look at it from a whole. But is there any guys like outside of Joe Musgrove that you can say came to San Diego and under Larry Rothschild has, re has really excelled? And I think the answer is a pretty resounding no. And the most interesting part is today you see that he gets fired, and, it, and if you go through and you read a lot of the comments or you know the pages on it, there's a lot of Yankees fans and Yankees media people saying, yeah, this was always going to be a problem. This was always a problem when he was in New York. They were saying, I don't really believe like outside of like CC Sabathia was like the only guy that really vouched for him. And that really played really well when he was that, that pitching coach, like every, their point was pretty much everyone declined under him. And that's the same way it's been in San Diego. So I, I definitely get the reasoning behind firing him. Um, like I said before, and if you guys follow the channel a lot, like I've, I've said, like I don't really think it's smart to fire a guy in season. I think this is different. I think it's because of the injuries. You know, that's why. Um, and not even talking about the bats, like the reason this team isn't where it's at is because of, of a big issue, right? The starting pitching is completely absent. And if you look at the quality starts throughout the NL West, I think I sent you guys this tweet. I'll go through the list real quick. Dodgers, 61 quality starts. Rockies, 57 quality starts. Giants, 50. And tied for last are the Diamondbacks and the Padres with 33 quality starts. That is the farthest fit thing from the production that we we're expecting out of this starting pitching staff. And now what you're seeing is a bullpen that is so fatigued 
that every time they come they come out, one of the guys will get rocked. It seems like it's almost a guarantee every night. You see how the Padres lose. They'll go down a couple runs early. The starter will get pulled in like the fourth or fifth inning. And this is how it's felt. I mean, in a lot of cases in the last couple of weeks, it's been a bullpen piece throwing two innings. But then the bullpen guys come in. The Padres start to make a comeback. They'll be down by a run or two. And then it, it almost feels like, feels like it's always the next half inning. But, you know, very shortly after they start clawing back, the bullpen comes out and a guy gives up two home runs or, you know, whatever the case is. And they score three runs and they run away with the game and the Padres lose. It, it feels like we've watched the same game like, like every single day almost in the last like two or three weeks. It really does. Um, but it, it, I mean, that's the reason like the blueprint, right? The blueprint print right now is that the bullpen is so fatigued that they're either going to lose you the game or you're not going to have a starter and you're going to be pitching the bullpen. And all you need is one reliever to come in and have a rough inning and lose you the game. It's just, it's just not sustainable. It's not working. And you've seen a pitching staff that's been completely decimated under Larry Rothschild. So of course that was going to be the move to fire him, I think. Um, and we, we've talked about Larry in the past. Um, we talked about it. What was it? Three months ago. Um, and Chase, you were pretty harsh on him. I think, I think we were all pretty harsh on him, honestly. Um, and people didn't agree with us. People didn't like that. We were really like, Hey, this is an issue. Um, and I think one of those issues or one of the reasons why people didn't, didn't agree or didn't really see it our, our way was that their point was, well, look at the pitching development that's been lacking. There's been pitching injuries in the past, though. I will say, I think they've inflated a lot under Larry Rothschild, but the other aspect of this whole, oh, you're firing your pitching coaches. Is that, does that mean that the pitching development is going to improve? I don't think we have a reason to believe so. I, I don't. Um, you look back at a lot of these top end prospects that the Potters have had, and you don't see much success. Is this a step in the right direction? 100%. Because you're accepting, hey, we made a mistake by firing Larry Rothschild. We're going to let him go. There could be some corresponding moves as well, where maybe we start seeing some guys, you know, develop these pitchers a little bit better. But this needs to be a, like an organizational point to, all right, let's improve this pitching development at the minor league level, at the MLB level. Like we need to really tear it down. And, and hopefully this is a sign of things to come. But Isaac, do you think that that the pitching development is still a very, very big looming issue going into next year and, and future seasons? I don't think it's ever going to go away. It doesn't feel like it's ever going to go away because it's been a problem for so long. Ryan Weathers comes up, has really great outings to, to, you know, start his career. And ever since then, he hasn't – and he's still super young. And I was talking with the Padres right yesterday at the game. He's still super young. It's very unfair for him to be put in that kind of situation. Um, I think even a couple players feel that way from what I've read, that it's super unfair to put a 21-year-old kid out there and expect him to give you quality starts each and every outing. So, I mean, he, he barely has any experience. He's still trying to develop and – Remember when we drafted him, I don't think he was supposed to be anything big. I think he was kind of supposed to be like a developmental project kind of guy, if I remember correctly. And that's exactly what he is. That's exactly what we're still trying to wait for to happen. Like, I think 23, 24 is realistically when you can start criticizing the guy for going out there and not providing you quality outings. But right now, it's just not fair. Um, and obviously, we're all frustrated with him. We don't like that he's going out there and, and not providing quality outings, but I mean, at the same time, can't blame it all on him. Uh, Mackenzie Gore's development has hit a massive, has hit a massive roadblock, and you know he's fell all the way down to number sixty-two in the rankings. Do I think he can bounce back? Of course, but you know the developmental aspect is is very concerning, considering the 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 potential that this kind of guy has of Mackenzie Gore. You know, and um, the Rays develop guys like No Tomorrow. There's a bunch of there's a couple teams in this league that develop guys like No Tomorrow. The Dodgers, like as much as I hate them, Dustin May, Clayton Kershaw, Walker Bueller, those guys are dominant. Like those guys are legit. Those guys have Cy Young caliber stuff. When have we ever developed a guy with Cy Young caliber stuff? I don't remember the last one. It's been a while. Um, was did was Matt, Matt Latos? Did Matt Latos climb through our farm? I don't remember. Because that's a, like that's one of the last guys I can think of. I mean. Very few players that are Padres are homegrown. Yeah, also, yeah. just just to add on to your on to your statement, Patino, Quantrill, like all the guys that have left are excelling right now. Exactly. Quantrill's having one hell of a year with the Indians. He had one of probably the most dominant stretches of July and August. I think he had under one ERA through like nine starts. 
he has barely a three ERA right now, but even then he just went seven scoreless innings. And you're just looking back at that trade. Clevenger is on the IL. Naylor has been really solid for them. Quantrill has been a shutout starter for them. And you realize, wow, we really are missing those guys right now. And yeah. uh, to point Matt earlier, going under pitching development and the only pitcher to really un- thrive under Rothschild is Musgrove. Everybody sort of ha- already pegged Musgrove as a breakout candidate the moment he left the Pirates. He already had, hey, this guy is like a dark horse breakout candidate and he's going to improve majorly if he goes to the right place. And we see that. Even then, there's still some inconsistency in his game, but can we contribute that all to Rothschild? We can contribute some of it, but I'd say the other parts of it where he was already a talented pitcher. It's just the Pirates organization is an absolute mess. It's in chaos. It's in shambles. They... They just can't develop pitching. We've seen it. We've seen all the guys leave the Pirates and become superstars. And I think Musgrove was just another one of those people. And going into another point, uh, we really won't know if this was the right move until, you know, probably the end of season. Let's see what Ben Fritz has. And um, to Tingler's point, I do think that the bullpen, you know, as struggling right now is more Tingler's fault than it is Rothschild because I'm going to quote Tingler here. I may not quote him hundred percent correctly, but what he said is why he hasn't brought anyone up to start and why he rather have bullpen games instead of throwing out a double A or triple A kid. As he said, he feels that the guys that are already fatigued with arms falling off in the bullpen have a better shot of winning us games than some of the guys in AAA and AA. Which here's, I don't think is 100% true because you need some fresh arms on the team. Well, I was just going to say, the, the one thing is, who is he talking about? I, I don't know who he's talking about that's going to go and give you a starter level inning. Like, is he just, is he specifically saying like a bullpen day? Because the quote I saw was like, we have guys that we believe in more as like as starting a game. Like it made it seem like starting a game. Like he's talking like throwing Miggy Diaz, Craig Stammen, Nabil, like those guys exclusively are better options yeah. than than Goran Martinez. Um, and even Reese Near, he doesn't he doesn't really get that big of an opportunity to go out there and get stretched out at all. I don't know. That that was a really strange comment to me. That's actually exactly what he's saying, Matt. Is that he thinks that Craig Stammen a combination of Craig Stammen, who, you know, hasn't really, I mean, yeah, he had a great beginning of the year, but ever since then it's cooled off. And he did pitch two scoreless in Philly, you know, congrats, whatever. A struggling, young, developing Ryan Weathers, who has mass massively struggled, is probably an understatement. Miggy Diaz, who I brought it up earlier. If you notice the trend throughout at least the Potters organization, these guys have a really good start to their careers. And then they fall off. I think Miggy Diaz might have been one of the easiest pitchers to figure out just because his stuff isn't crazy. Then you have Reese Near who has a good fastball, toss some pretty good innings. Um, I don't get how that, that, that combination gives you a better chance to win. I think, you know, you've already seen enough to where you can risk something. You can go out there and you can finally, you know, grow, grow a pair and say, let me call up someone like Martinez or Gore. And you know, even if they don't, even if they don't pull through, it's not like any of these other guys are pulling through either. But the Padres desperately need some reinforcements right now. Um, do I think firing Larry Rothschild saves the season? No, not at all. What saves the season is Darvish and Paddock coming back healthy and and providing great outings for us. And Paddock, Snell, Musgrove, and Darvish all starting to be the pitchers we expect them to be. That's what saves the season. Not, I mean, not firing the guy, which. Are we all happy? Of course. But, uh, you know, the, these guys need reinforcements. Jace Tingler needs to really, you know, start figuring this stuff out because he, he could be on the hot seat next. Yeah. Um, Chase, anything else you wanted to add? Yeah, I was just going to go off Isaac here. Uh, was firing Rothschild a good thing? Yes, probably in the long term. Is he to blame for everything for the pitching staff? No, Tingler does carry some blame there. Does Tingler need to change his habits with the bullpen and overthrowing guys? 
Yes. If, will the season change if he does? Yes. If not, I don't see us making playoffs. Even with those pitchers coming back, the way he abuses the bullpen, we won't make playoffs. Those guys are so tired. Those guys are so fatigued that when they go out, they struggle. And even if you're starter, if you, even if you have your top three guys going seven innings and Paddock goes five, and then you were like, oh, you know what? We don't have a fifth starter. Let's just make it a bullpen day. We still have another month of playing baseball before we make playoffs. How are we going to make it through that if every five days, on top of all the other innings they have to pitch because the starters don't go six, seven innings, then you're throwing them another whole game. How are they going to make it to playoffs? How are we going to win games like that? Good point. Okay, and and the thing is, it, it like the bullpen days were working early on, and then over the last month, when the bullpen's numbers have started falling apart, the bullpen's the bullpen days are also not working anymore. Like, it, it makes sense when you look at how many innings, and also. If you guys are just at the game too, like if like because you can see on the scoreboard like how many innings these guys have pitched, and right across you'll see the other pitcher that's either pitching for you know the other team if he's a reliever, you'll see how many innings a lot of these guys have, and there'll be relievers that you know too like that have bounced around the league, and you look at the Padres guy, you look at that guy, and they'll be playing a similar role, and the Padres dude will have like twenty more innings. It'll be like fifty to thirty for like every single guy or whatever it is now. I mean now these guys have have had a lot more innings pitched. But I remember around July when I would, because I went to a lot of games in July specifically, it felt like every single guy in the Padres would have 20 more innings pitched than the guy in the other team. Like them compared to other teams and specifically other contending teams, it's ridiculous how much the bullpen is pitched. Um, but I, I think you guys are right. Does Larry Rothschild fix everything? No. Is it an overall positive move? Potentially, yes. You still have to nail the next hire. Um, I brought up that we're going to talk about Ben Fritz. That'll come out tomorrow morning. Um, we'll talk about him, um, and you know, and then as as we see and evaluate, you know, his how he does as the pitching coach for them in the offseason. We'll also talk, you know, is he the guy that they bring in full time, or is there other guys? You know, we're going to talk about all those options like in the offseason a lot more. Um, but right now, big thing, Larry Rothschild is gone. This was, it, it was a disaster in San Diego. Like, I don't know how else to put it. I, I don't, I'm not trying to rip the guy, but I, I don't know. Else, like what else you say? Like your entire staff falls apart two seasons in a row. Um, your team is really good and just gets completely lit up at the end of the year because there is no available pitching in two consecutive seasons, very short stint. Um, not a positive one, unfortunately for Larry Rothschild, but overall for the Padres, I think this is a positive move. There are still many looming questions about this team's or this franchise's ability to develop pitchers um, and actually improve these guys. So we'll see, you know, what are the corresponding moves that they make throughout the entire system. You know, we'll look into those and let you guys know our thoughts on them. But I think that's going to do it for today. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and you like our content. Also, we'll be talking about Ben Fritz tomorrow and then 40 minutes before the game, we'll be going live to uh, talk about, you know, the Dodgers series. And I'm sure you guys are going to have a lot of questions about, you know, Larry Rothschild, Ben Fritz and all that kind of stuff. So we'll definitely discuss this more. Um, I'm sure we're going to talk about Larry Rothschild and the pitching as a whole many more times throughout the season. Um, and this will definitely be probably the biggest storyline, I think, heading into the offseason. Um, but that is going to do it for today. Thank you guys for listening and we'll talk to you tomorrow.